So we finally meet. Lady Alcina Domitrescu strode into our collective hearts with those long legs and towering frame of hers upon the release of Resident oh, Evil Village and has just continued to get tens across the board since then. Let's see how special you are. She's unique, iconic, and I'd say is the reason for a chunk of Resident Evil Village's success, as the internet latched onto her when she was first revealed, and her uniqueness meant that there was plenty of intrigue about her role in the game. For some people, I reckon the thirst, though not quite in that way, to find out more about her was enough of a reason to buy the game in the first place. If you're wondering about Lady Domitrescu's past, then congratulations because we're officially in the same club. I've dived deep into Resident Evil Village to get all the information about Lady D that I could lay my filthy man hands on to bring you Lady Domitrescu's unofficial biography. So, from when she was born to her life before and after Miranda tempted her to the village, here's the story of Lady Alcina Domitrescu. Fight, 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 fight. This video has spoilers for the entirety of Resident Evil Village, so if you haven't played it and don't want the events surrounding Lady D to be spoiled, best to look away now. Anyway, let's kick this off with the birth of an icon. We don't know a whole lot about Lady Alcina Domitrescu's childhood. However, using a few choice facts from Resident Evil Village, it paints the picture, or portrait, of a wealthy, privileged upbringing amongst the backdrop of a bloody war. The First World War, to be exact. Lady Domitrescu was born around 1914, the same year World War I, or the Great War, broke out. While details of her upbringing during this time are practically non-existent, she was born into Cesare Domitrescu's bloodline. Cesare was one of the four kings who founded the village Ethan goes to, and judging by Lady Domitrescu's entire personality and outlook on life, the Domitrescu family were still firmly in the upper classes even centuries later, as Lady Domitrescu had a thoroughly aristocratic demeanour when we met her in Resident Evil Village. Lady Domitrescu didn't live in the village, or even visit it to our knowledge, until she was in her mid-40s. Until then, she lived in some unknown country, but regardless of where she called home, she was suffering. Like other noble families in history, Lady Domitrescu was born with a hereditary blood disease. The game never says what this blood disease was, but I think it's haemophilia. Why? Well, for centuries, both aristocrats and royalty tended to marry among their own limited upper class due to not wanting to mix with us common folk because we weren't as rich or wealthy or actually had chins or something. Because they didn't want to marry people who they would have seen as quote unquote lesser rank, they had a much smaller gene pool to choose from meaning that sometimes upper-class marriages were between family members, like cousins and such. This caused serious problems for their offspring. In one famous example, Queen Victoria passed on the haemophilia gene to her sons and daughters, and eventually onto Alexei Romanov of the Russian royal family. What I'm saying is that it seems likely that the Domitrescu family married among the upper classes for generations, <laughs> <laughs> and possibly among their own extended family, causing the same hereditary blood disease among their descendants as European royals, with Lady Alcina Domitrescu being one of those descendants. So, Lady D likely had haemophilia, which I'll get more onto later as it becomes very important to creating the Lady Domitrescu we know, love and fear. <laughs> I think Lady D was also an only child and the last of the Domitrescs. Stop it, man thing! When you kill her three daughters, one of the things she bellows is that the entire bloodline of House Domitresque is done in by the likes of you. If she had siblings or cousins or whatever, I don't think she'd say that. So we have an only child, born into nobility with haemophilia. 
all while World War I is breaking out. However Lady Domitresque was raised, it doesn't seem like a global war had much effect on her upbringing. When we meet her, she outright loathes the other lords, and is decked out in new look fashion, has a custom lipstick, and a giant portrait painted of her in Castle Domitresque. Safe to say, with all these trappings of luxury, Domitresque was firmly brought up as an aristocrat and made to think she was inherently superior to other people. Interestingly, the fact that she's wearing new look fashion indicates to me that she was on top of fashion trends, and so I think was probably a socialite in her day. I can't really imagine her doing anything else but swanning around at soirees in the latest fashion. Can you? But enough about her childhood, and adulthood actually. In 1958, at the age of 44, Lady Domitresque made her way to THE village. I've got my own pet theory about this. I think Miranda, knowing the history of the village, lured Lady Domitresque there with the promise of curing her haemophilia with her newly created Cadu parasite. Though, I expect she didn't share that last part with Domitresque as parasitical medical treatment isn't exactly an appealing thing to hear. As Miranda was trying to find a host for her daughter, Eva, she probably wanted to try a descendant of one of the village's founders to see if they had any genetic predisposition to mould, hence contacting Lady Domitresque. Lady Domitresque must have been desperate to have her haemophilia cured to go all the way to the isolated, rural village, considering the life of grandeur and privilege she lived before then. What happened? It tells you a lot about her frame of mind that she didn't mind being taken into a goddamn crypt to receive Miranda's treatment. Either that, or she was taken there and experimented upon against her will, which is a horrific thing to contemplate, to say the least. Though, I would not put it past Miranda. You might be thinking, but Zoe, Lady Domitresque was devoted to Miranda in Resident Evil Village. Heisenberg is but a child, and his devotion to you is questionable. She loved the new power, castle and daughters she was given by Miranda, so surely she must have been okay with the experiment. Not necessarily. Miranda notes in her journal that there's an element of mind control in the experiment she subjected Domitresque to, saying that she carried out a cognition control procedure. Sounds like Miranda literally brainwashed Domitresque into being a willing inhabitant of the village, which just adds to the absolute horror of what Domitresque went through before she became the murderous, blood-drinking lord we meet in Resident Evil Village. <laughs> <laughs> After the Kadu was implanted in Domitresque, Miranda noted that she responded very well to it. She gained the ability to change her body at will, maintained her cognitive abilities, and developed intense regenerative capabilities, which went a bit overboard and made her exquisitely tall. Mind you, although Lady D became pretty much immortal, the Kadu didn't cure her haemophilia. In fact, she now needed to drink blood in order to stay alive and maintain her regenerative abilities. Let's take a look at, him. at some point, Lady D turned into the white dragon form Ethan fights, as during the aforementioned boss fight, Domitresque bellows. <laughs> I think it's entirely possible that Lady D didn't drink enough blood at first, or wasn't aware that she needed to after the experiment, and this forced her to turn into her dragon form under Miranda's observation. Maybe it was only afterwards that they learned she needed to consume blood to survive. Who knows, maybe she killed a villager in her dragon form, and the blood she drank along the way turned her back into her humanoid form. That's just a headcanon I have though, there's nothing in the game to suggest that actually happened. And now we have the Lady Alcina Domitresque that we know from Resident Evil Village. Now she's an adoring member of Miranda's family, she's given Castle Domitresque to rule over, and starts up production of the famous Domitresque wine, Sanguis Virginis, using the vineyards that lay in the shadow of her new home. Miranda is the master of delegation, and accordingly gave Domitresque her own Cadu to use in experiments. 
Domitresk chose three living girls from the village, who she implanted the Kadu into and killed in the process. Yet, the Kadu produced flies inside these girls, which gradually consumed them. After a couple of days, the mass of flies covering each girl changed colour, and, before Domitresk's eyes, transformed back into the girls. But now, instead of being flesh and bone, they were made up of thousands of flies. Judging by Domitresk's journal, it sounds like these three girls immediately imprinted upon Domitresk, who, in return, immediately bonded with them too, and treated them as her daughters from that point on. She named them Bella, Daniela, and Cassandra. And she genuinely loved them. Mother, I bring you fresh prey. You are so kind to me, daughters. <laughs> Meet the daughters. <laughs> Man blood. <laughs> the oldest was Bella, a quiet individual with a strong head on her shoulders. Cassandra was the middle child and a sadist who enjoyed killing, leaving Daniela, the youngest daughter, who was the craziest and most delusional of the three. There's this tiny detail about Daniela which I love, which is the part of her head is shaved. Her hair doesn't grow back because she's technically A. Flies and B. Dead. Just thought that was cool. Sometime after her daughters are born, if you can call it that, Lady Domitresk commissions this portrait of them looking really human and so different from what they actually look like. Is this wishful thinking? Maybe this portrait is an idealised version of the daughters, and how Lady Domitresk sees them in her head, instead of the murderous wenches we know them to be. <laughs> Reddit has a theory that Lady Domitresk could have given birth to these three daughters in the portrait before she came to the village, but they all died in adulthood. That's a pretty good explanation for why she experimented upon the corpses of three young girls, to be honest. Maybe she was trying to fill the void her biological daughters left, and, in some sense, bring them back. This just adds even more poignancy to her relationship with her daughters, but it's up to you whether you buy that theory or not. Any wholesomeness ends right here, though, as it's now that the murder sprees kick off. Castle Domitresk quickly cultivates an atmosphere of fear, as maids who mess up in the tiniest way like spilling soup or opening curtains, are sent to the cellar and never seen again. New female faces are brought in from the village to serve the mistresses of the castle, alongside the gradual disappearance of village men too. Bella, Daniela and Cassandra hunt men, and use their blood, along with the disgraced maids from the castle, to enrich the Domitresque wine. Once they're drained of blood, the men are hollowed out and used as scarecrows in the vineyard, and the women are turned into thrall-like servants to protect the castle. At least the Domitresks use every part of the body, I guess? And the Sanguis Virginis wine is given rave reviews in the wine world due to its richness. Considering the snobbery which I presume existed in the wine world back then, Lady Domitresk must have been thrilled. Life continues like this in the Domitresk household for a while, and then a villager decides he's had enough of the tyrannical, murderous reign of Lady Domitresk. This unnamed man steals a Domitresk family heirloom named the Dagger of Death's Flowers, and imbues it with poisons from across the world in the hope that it could kill demons and monsters. Monsters like Lady Domitresk. You ungrateful, selfish wretch! He tries to assassinate the matriarch, but his plans go awry somehow and he's killed in the process. Lady D, shaken by the experience, seals the dagger and the corpse of the assassin in the Tower of Worship to prevent further attempts on her life. This might seem a bit weird at first, why not just destroy it? But the Tower of Worship was the most secure building in Castle Domitresk and the hardest one to get to. You've got to find four angel masks across the entire castle to get in there, for Christ's sake. And I assume Lady Domitresk probably liked that she kept the body of her would-be assassin somewhere in her castle 
to prove that if she survived one attempt on her life, she can damn well do it again. Ruined everything! Then the events of Resident Evil Village happen, which I'm not going to go into massive detail about. Ethan arrives, breaks into Castle Domitresque, is found by the daughters, and murders all three of them before also murdering a very dragony Lady Domitresque. Witches! Mind you, the sections featuring Ethan prove that Lady Domitresque really did care about her daughters. She's visibly raw with despair when she finds out Ethan has killed one of her daughters. What have you done to my daughter? And eventually hunts you in revenge. Oh, shit! Like I'd let you get away. Remember that Ethan also finds Daniela, the youngest daughter, locked in the library. Locking your youngest daughter in a room far away from the main castle sounds like something a protective mother would do, doesn't it? With Daniela being the youngest of her three daughters, I think Lady Domitresque wanted to do all she could to protect her from Ethan, and ultimately failed. I don't want to Mind you, they did hoist you up by your hands and make it very clear that they wanted to suck you dry of all your blood, so maybe we shouldn't have too much sympathy for them. Lady Domitresque ends up dead by Ethan's hand and calcifies into a crystal statue. But is she really gone? Now, look, hear me out about this. Inside the storybook Mia reads to Rosemary, at the very end we see a raven drinking a drop of the blood of the Bat Lord, who sheds his blood to feed the young child right at the beginning of the tale. The Bat Lord symbolises Lady Domitresque in this fairy tale, could this one drop of blood hint that Lady Domitresque isn't completely gone? That perhaps some of her DNA has been stolen and saved by a mysterious figure? Or that she's somehow living on in someone else? I have absolutely no idea, but if a Resident Evil Village DLC is on the horizon, Lady Domitresque could be featured in it using this mysterious drop of blood and, let's face it, the possibility of seeing more of her would make that a very popular DLC indeed. And that's the story of Lady Domitresque. If you enjoyed the video, thanks very much, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Eurogamer for more videos about video games, as we have a new one out every single day. You can also follow us on Instagram at Team Eurogamer, where you'll get daily updates about videos we have coming out, when we're doing live streams, and glimpses behind the scenes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go, so remember to stay hydrated, folks, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>